Norfolk is weighing whether to move forward with a massive federal agreement that includes building a flood wall. WHRO breaks down what's in it and why many people are concerned. City officials call the plan Resilient Norfolk. It's their long-term vision for how to prepare the city from storm surge flooding, as outlined in a recent promotional video. Coastal storms are becoming more and more frequent in the city of Norfolk, bringing flooding and extensive damage. The Resilient Norfolk Project delivers on the city's vision to become the coastal community of the future. The most talked about element of the project is a new flood wall. It would stretch around the waterfront from the Campostella Bridge, through downtown and Ghent, and up to Lambert's Point. But that's only part of the $2.6 billion plan. The federal government is expected to foot about 65% of that bill, leaving Norfolk on the hook for about $930 million. They've gotten some money from the state so far to help. Here's Councilwoman Andrea McClellan at a meeting about it last month. This is a huge opportunity for the city of Norfolk. We are in a very unique position. Normally, we get money after disaster. This is extraordinary. The project with the Army Corps of Engineers will take about a decade to complete and has broken into several phases. First come the flood walls and levees. Chief Resilience Officer Kyle Spencer says the city is already well into the design. In renderings, officials envision the flood wall to look more like a raised earthen berm in areas frequented by residents and tourists for the water view. Here's Spencer. It will be that bin wall concept where it's basically the walking path on top of the wall and you can incorporate the Elizabeth River Trail as part of that system as well. Other elements include pump stations, tide gates, and surge barriers at Pretty Lake, the Lafayette River, and Broad Creek. But residents of the historically Black neighborhoods on the south side of Norfolk, across the Elizabeth River, say they've been excluded from any discussions about the plan. They're upset that the flood wall won't extend to their vulnerable communities. So when I heard that there was a plan to protect my home from storm surges, I was relieved until I realized that I, where I live in Berkeley, my home was left out of any structural solutions. That's Berkeley resident Kim Sutter at a recent city council meeting. Council members postponed a vote on the agreement that night. Here's Sutter again. The Army Corps of Engineers used a red line on their map showing who would receive those structural projects and who would be left out. My first thought was, oh God, it's happening again. And it's happening to me. The city has instead proposed to work with homeowners there to raise homes and fill in basements. Norfolk resident Vincent Hodges told council members that's not enough. Many of these residents have overcome a history of more than a century of racial discriminatory housing practices to purchase their homes. They now find themselves at the tail end of adequate community advisement. Despite the price tag, Resilient Norfolk also doesn't address central flooding issues that plague the city. Skip Stiles with the Norfolk nonprofit Wetlands Watch explains. It's only like Hurricane Isabel. It is not nuisance flooding. It's not rainfall flooding. It's not sea level rise. He says the city needs to do more water quality analysis on the project before moving forward. But he also wants to know the city's plan for all those other flooding issues. We got to build a flood wall. There's no doubt about that. But tell me where it fits into the overall citywide strategy for the next 15 or 20 years. How much do I as a citizen of Norfolk expect to pay and what am I going to get from it? City manager Chip Filer acknowledges that. We all recognize there is still a lot of work we're going to have to do for this daily sort of blue sky nuisance flooding, and that is money that we will have to spend. Council's approval would allow the city to sign a legally binding partnership with the Army Corps. That moves the project into the construction phase and unlocks about $400 million from the federal infrastructure law. Officials hope to start building the first part of the flood wall soon afterward. Katherine Hafner, WHRO News.